Ô ô ô ô nghiệp Oh no Oh no Are we rolling? We're rolling Are we live? Are we live streaming? Is this Twitch? We are back at one of my favorite places in the north Viking Lodge I, I got some exciting news I'll wait till we're out on the ice to share it Because it came to a shock to me it came to a shock to the owners of Viking But I'm, I'm not gonna blow the surprise right now um, Cranberry Lakes we're fishing the chain of lakes and some of the surrounding backcountry lakes. We haven't really branched off. I've been here quite a few times, probably more than almost any other lodge I've been to. And I've focused on the Cranberry Lakes. Today, we're doing a backcountry adventure. Tomorrow, we're doing a backcountry adventure. We're with Matt and Paul. Clayton Schick is staying in this very cabin as well. He'll be posting videos, so stay tuned for those. Those will be on his channel. And today, we're looking for pike, maybe with a bonus walleye. Here we go. Boys are talking. Yeah, secret spots, lots of secret spots. Should we go fishing? Should we go fishing? Should we go fishing? <laughs> We're going pike fishing. Cloudy the chance I like fishing. Clayton will be fishing too. Go check out his video. See some bigger fish. Alright, we should go fishing. Back country, baby. Alright, Clayton's fishing here. I'm with Matt and Paul. We're gonna go out there somewhere. Big yonder. Pike. Big pike. Big pike. Big, big, big pike. pike. Side bet? Actually, no. We'll just say they're gonna make pizzas for us if we win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love pizza. <laughs> All right, we're splitting up. We won't be too far apart, but we're gonna do some uh, some pike fishing with maybe some bonus walleyes. Beautiful drive in, just stunning. Three tip ups will cover things good, and then a couple of us can jig, and I'll just be whatever. That looks delicious. <laughs> that looks a good size. All right, we're dropping down the HD7i Pro. This is my favorite aqua view in the lineup. All right, we got the ice defense once again. We're trying this. Hopefully, you don't lose another rod down the hole. I mean, almost. Well, the crew is somewhat set up. We got the 650 over there, Clayton in the distance. One tip up there with the aqua view set up one tip up hiding there i'm going to set up another aqua view and then we're gonna do some jigging in the shack we'll take turns watch the lives go pretty shallow like three four feet of water and this is not a typical time of year that people target pike I, i've talked about this before you know march april up here season still open is, is a great time to target pike they stack up in the mouths of these you know spawning creeks bays that sort of stuff but now we're fishing more of a i don't know what, what would you call this matter transition zone yeah, there'll be perch kicking around, some walleye. So yeah, we'll, we'll have three tip-ups, but at a certain point, more tip-ups doesn't like exponentially increase your odds. So we will do some jigging in the shack and we are just blessed by spectacular weather and this scenery. Not to put the drone up yet, this is fantastic. Like something out of a calendar. I love this shack, this is my favorite, the 650. It's good for three people, for two people for camping. Lots of room. I think we got a flag. All right. Luckily, we got Clayton watching our flags for us. Woo. She's burning some line. I always like to check my drag. Thanks, Clayton. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We are hooked up. Okay, not big. Not big. Woohoo! Jumping. Oh, whoa. All right. Well, thanks to Matt's assist. We're on the board with our first pike at Viking. They do get bigger, but I just love the underwater. Just being able to film underwater footage. Pike just lends itself to that in shallow water. And this is the bait Matt and Paul had for me. Little Cisco's and yeah, you can't really go wrong with a bait that size. Almost lost the aqua down the hole. That would have been a, I would have cried. So yeah, over the last couple years, I've used different devices for, you know, instead of just your typical tip up, which I still use in some situations, I think it, just a pro thermal circular tip up is the fastest, most convenient way a lot of the times to use your second line, because you can use two lines in Manitoba. I've used jaw jackers, which I still use. I think they're the best for stock trout. I've used the iFish Pros, which are really good. And now, I mean, I've been trying the Finicky Fooler. It's a little more basic in this, in conjunction with the ice defense, it seems good. I think there's a highly likelihood 
if I don't use the foam insert it comes with to potentially lose a, a rod down the hole. Yeah, so far so good. Well, as I mentioned, I'm fishing with owners of Viking, Matt and Paul. And uh, if you guys haven't seen the video, I did an episode of the Canadian Angle from the last season with these guys. We did a spring a multi-species smackdown, some super cool shallow water walleye fishing with some pretty pretty sweet underwater footage. So yeah, I've been here, I don't know how many times I've been to Vikings, but Viking, but always good times. Haven't done the backcountry thing yet, so this is the first. Marcel? Oh yeah. I just hope Marcel doesn't show up and ruin everything. What do you got? Oh, the real chocolate chip Pop-Tarts. Coming in live from Marcel. Ooh, and banana, oh, banana chocolate. Oh man, I'm gonna have one of these and one of those. Here, do it. Thank you. Oh, oh. A little trick with your tip-up baits. First, you gotta make sure they're thawed. If they're thawed and they're still not sinking, get yourself a nice knife. It's uh, actually called Giant Mouse Knives. And uh, I think, think people call them everyday carry knives. But uh, it's just a wicked sharp knife. It's held its blade for so long and just for cutting bait for odd jobs and stuff. It's been good. Sometimes you gotta massage it a little bit too. I'm gonna try this thing. I'll link it below, blue tips. I think it gives me a notification on my phone. I downloaded the app before I left. Jay's tip up, it's been found. <laughs> you can pick different noises. <laughs> Oh, I think I got a fish. Watch this. Jeez. Didn't even get things set up yet. Something definitely. Whoa, ho, ho, baby. Yo, Mo. We got a flag. Typically with tip ups, you want to hit them when they're moving away. It does not feel big. It's kind of just coming in. Well, we're off to a good start. There's the leader. Ah, oh, bigger than the last guy. Whoa, and he's out. And he's out. There's some nice green cabbage there. All right, pike number two. We we're just getting my second tip up set and probably 34 inches. I was playing with my little tip up alarm and I heard the iFish Pro jiggle and uh, hey, good sign. You can see why I think these pike are hanging around here. There she goes. But these green weeds right here, that's pretty green. I'm surprised how green it is for middle of winter, but that can hold fish year round. Now it says it's on. Oh yeah. We'll clip it on the flag. Hopefully it still pops. Flake, flake, flake. Yo, matter Paul, it's your turn! That's yours! Hopefully the line isn't in the camera. We might have lost him. The camera claimed us. Did you see it? Oh, the pike's down there. Look at this. Yeah, we're gonna drop it on his head. Here, take it. Just keep it around that depth. Oh, there he is. Oh, he just, oh. No, he ate it. I'm just following him. Oh, he chowed it. One second, wait a second. You could probably hit him whenever, yeah. Oh, that was so good. Matt is on. Fish on. What's going on? Paul's got a pike on. What do we got? Decent maybe? Ooh. Well, oh, the same size. Is that one treble, two? Well, we're just keeping the action going. Mediums. GSPs, as my friend Taro calls them, good sized pikes. I'm not going to sit still at all at this rate. Oh, flag. Uh, Matt, your flag. I'm going to grab that camera. Yeah, let's do this. Another flag for the team. Oh, it's there. It's that other style of tip up I was talking about. The old faithful. Is it true there's a 50 inch pike in here named Olga? Oh yeah. We're all just huffing and puffing. We're, we're gonna get her right now. What do you think? What do you think? It doesn't feel very big. No, another medium? I think she might be a little bigger. She's moving some, uh, never mind. <laughs> I take that back. Take it back, take it back. Good job. <laughs> That's the money shot. The money shot. <laughs> all right. Oh. Flags are flying, it's good. Perch, big perch, big huh. perch. Wow. Yeah, if you had a rod, you could probably catch a big perch right now. This is your time to shine. The perch is right behind the bait. Oh, yeah. It looks like a decent sized perch. Have you gotten middle. big ones here? Yeah. Oh, we ate it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice perch. 
He was staring at the pike bait. Nice. I never think about the north for perch, but I mean, that's that's a nice fish. Yeah, that's sweet. All right, we'll slide him back in. There's a lot going on there. I'm surprised nothing got tangled in all that. My goal today is to see one of Clayton's tip-ups before him. There you go, Matt. We got Paul. So it's time for the big announcement. I kind of hyped it up a little bit. Do you know what the big announcement even is? It turns out that we are family. We are fourth cousins once removed. There's this thing called the Mennonite game. And I got, you know, obviously Mennonite roots. My dad has this computer program and he'll punch in names and he will find out how closely people are related. So obviously they're Weenses. If you're a Mennonite, you know Weens is a very Mennonite name. Siemens is a Mennonite name. He punched in Paul's name and lo and behold, we're fourth cousins once removed. So it means I now own part of Viking Lodge and I'm now gonna offer you guys 20% off all your future stays. No, I can't do that. Put it on your tab. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it on my tab. Anyways, it's just funny. I think we're all related in some way. Sixth, seventh cousins, I don't know. But happy to be back here and doing the backcountry thing. So our plan today is to do pike, maybe some walleye perch will get mixed in, and then tomorrow we're doing some rainbows. You know, a bit of an exploratory mission, but uh, that, that's what I like. I mean, I would never want to be on a lake where I just only have, you know, one option. And that that's why it's amazing that in a location like this that they can fish. I mean, this part of the world, it's just, it's it's endless. And even, even them living here, there's lakes that they have never fished yet. So it's cool. There's really a lot of possibilities. I'm going to put this camera back on the tripod. Oh, I'm with my cousins. Family reunion in the Eskimo shack. Yeah. Long lost cousin Jay. Finally. Finally reunited. <laughs> I need a, yeah. Stuff eating helps you. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was fun. It's never really a rush. I mean, you don't want to gut hook the fish. It does just happen sometimes. You are going to hook fish deep when you're fishing with bait. Just making sure my drag's good. Any ice is broken off here. All right, I gotta land this fish. This is small, and the other flag just went up. There she is. Okay, I'm gonna pop her out real fast. All right, putting her back. We're gonna go see what Matt's up to. Getting our steps in. I'll reset this one. Oh. What? Matt? Oh, baby! Don't screw this one up, Matt. Ooh. Oh yeah, stops a little bit. Well, it has been pretty steady action here at Viking. We got a pike. Oh, tail first. <laughs> they just come jumping out of the hole. Man, I'm liking the single treble deal. The fish just hit it. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> Here, take him. Ridiculous. Oh. oh no. I think you're okay. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's good, it's good now. It was wrapped funny around the rod. Did you see that? Oh, the alarm's going. <laughs> Peanuts. Oh, the other one just went up. Yeah. Holy smokes. I'm not sure what a hernia is, but I'll probably have one after today. Just gonna slowly reel until I feel some tension. And then I'm gonna figure out that he's gone. Ah! Jeez! Oh my goodness, I couldn't find my bait. And I just got absolutely throttled. There we go. Oh, I think I lost him. Oh, no, oh, oh. Yeah. The start it did, but tough to say coming in a little too easy. Definitely got into some weed. Oh, biggest one yet. About the same. Yeah. All right. Hot and heavy. All right, guys, I want to talk a little bit about gear that I like to use for, you know, this dead stick tip-up style approach. Um, obviously, you can still do the normal tip-up deal. It's cheaper. You don't need to bring more rods along. You can bring a, a bucket of, like, pro thermal tip-ups and you're good to go. So, in that way, that's an easy way to do it. I don't think you necessarily lose a lot of fish hand lining, but the rod is just, I feel like you, you are in a little more control. So anyways, there's kind of three rods in the Frostbite lineup. They're my favorite to use for tip-ups. The Mr. Big, the 43 Heavy, which I use for jigging purposes as well, and Dead Sick for lake trout or pike. 
You've got the Drama Queen, the 45 medium heavy, and these have a little bit of a slower action. So this is a fiberglass rod, so it bends a little more throughout the middle. And the thing is, with these fish, you know, back in the day, a lot of the rules would, rods would be pool cues. When the fish would shake its head, it would just bend a little bit in the tip, and then it'll go slack. And that's where you're gonna potentially lose fish is when it goes tight, slack, tight. This rod, see how it bends? As that fish shakes its head, it stays pinned. A long rod as well is gonna help absorb that. So a 45, these rods are a little more of a pain to transport to find the rod case that's gonna fit a rod that long. Something I do with these rods is you can actually take off the butt section. So if you have a rod case that would only fit, you know, whatever 42 inch rod, and this is 45, 46 inches, then you can take that off and then just screw it back on when you get to the lake. Uh, a reel, something 2000 to 4000 size that holds a bunch of braid. Um, but yeah, we're using the Drama Queen. The other one that's good is the Slugger, the extra heavy. Um, it really depends on the size of bait and the size of fish, but I think uh, I think the Mr. Big is probably one of the most versatile big trout or big pike rods if you want to get one. Um, but then 40 to 50 pound braid. I'm using a swivel right now. Sometimes I will use, uh, you know, you can use a uni to uni and FG knot to con connect your line. And then I've been playing with just a fluoro leader. In the past, I've tied wire quick strike rigs. I think they're great. I think they are more abrasive resistant. But today I'm trying 40 pound fluoro. And another thing I'm doing is, you know, I have been using rigs with two hooks. I've been using rigs with one hook. This is just one single treble talking to Clayton. That's what he has confidence in. But I think uh, it's just important to, I don't know, never be stuck in, stuck not in a rut, but in a mindset that it's the only way to do it. Cause I hadn't really used fluoro quick strike rigs until today. And you know, I'm checking after every fish and it's smooth. If there was a nick, I'd retie. But I think, uh, I think this could be easier. It's a lot easier to rig. It's more accessible to find heavy fluoro than finding, you know, the proper tieable wire. So 40 pound fluoro, uh, I'm gonna keep using it for now. Maybe I all of a sudden have a heartbreak on a giant fish and I change my mind, but. Yep. Oh, flag, Clayton! 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 <laughs> Clayton, you got a flag! <laughs> Run! Okay. Run! Run! Finally, that's all I wanted to do today was tell Clayton you got one flag, just to feel, feel good about myself. When's lunch, Clayton? You got Smokies they're cooking us, or are they called Chick Sticks? Pickerel or walleye? Pickerel. Pickerel. <laughs> See, this is what happened with the rainbows. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, that's I was okay. frozen. I'm thinking walleye. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. nice walleye. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> he jumped into the hole. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, 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 we got a situation. Oh no, oh no, it tipped the whole thing over. Marcel, I need you. I don't know what happened. That was the same thing that happened with the trout the other day. That oh, it's not big. Man, I can't believe you pulled the rod like that. Almost lost a rod to this little guy. Oh yeah, you grabbed that, sure. Not now, seems to be working. That fish, another one. Oh my goodness, this is yours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we lost him, mad down. That fall was fantastic, you planned that. Did you get that, Marcel? A lot of out of shape men here. Oh. Shoot. Oh. You just fell so hard. Oh, that was brutal. <laughs> Oh, 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 yep. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. The rod almost went down the hole. Oh, my heart. Oh geez. No, my whole thing's almost down the hole. My goodness. Oh, the steps don't get easier. You're not gonna believe this. There's no flags up right now. Well, I'm now in the shack for, well, more, more time than I spent all day maybe. Paul, 
Paul's been anchoring down the shack for the team. The shallowest one's been the hottest and the one that the camera's in front of, which is kind of nice. So I'll be curious what all came by. Maybe a big fish swam by. Definitely some walleyes came by. There's some perch. We've seen Clayton running for a flag once or twice, but uh, looking for that big mama. They said they saw a big one on live scope, so. Oh, oh, literally as I put my face out. Thanks, Clayton. Oh, no. Just screaming. This fish is just absolutely tearing. This might be a bigger one. Tough to say right now. Could be in weeds or it could be big. Mm, definitely a better one. That fish tore a lot of lines. So it, it could be big, could just be moving towards me. This has definitely been the hot hole in like four feet of water under the ice, three feet of water under the ice. Another thing that I like about long rods, I forgot to mention this, sometimes when pike will cut such a hard angle, you actually need to bury your rod to get it stuck out of the ice. Oh yeah, that's a proper pike. It was bigger than I thought. Let's get that head up. Oh yeah. When they do this, I kind of just chill. That's a fat pike. There we go. All right, I love having these long hemostats ready. The goal for any big fish is less than 30 seconds out of the water. That wasn't smooth. All right, we're gonna throw them on the bump board right here. I'll do a little reverse bump. I'll give you guys a look. We'll bump them and put them right back. There we go. That's the right class fish. Probably 35, 36. Just peeled line. All right, throw it down. I'm guessing 35. 36 in a bit. Cool. There she goes. Nice, nice. There's, they're seeing some bigger fish around. So like I said, it's about preparation, having the bump board or getting someone to grab it. Now it's just such a habit to keep these clipped on, especially because pike will get hooks deeper. I just clip it on my jacket. <laughs> just like that. Sweet. Look how clear that hole is. Look at that hole versus that one with the bubbler. So good. I love these things. It is a, you know, extra work, but they're cool devices. Well, when I didn't know what my game plan was in the morning, I'm like, I can make it here. Sunrise is only 8.50. We could. Oh, whoa. Whoa, this might be a little bigger. Wow, that looks solid. Giant walleye, huge walleye. No, I don't know. <laughs> nope. Decent pike though. Jeez. Wow, that was fun. Fish are active. It might be the evening, evening sprawl. Um, what did you guys do? Oh, there you go. He's coming. Nice. What is it? That's the question. Ooh, whoa. What's it? Hey. Well, that's probably one of them. One of the nicer walleyes. Sweet. I'm having fun just watching. I'm happy to not be running around for a second. That's looking walleye-ish. Whoa, what a hook set. No, you're good. I'm just watching the show. Yeah, oh, the flag is up. <laughs> Man, geez, that one hasn't gone up in a bit. Well, it is now 4.30. We're gonna do the Clayton Schick approach and walk up to the fish because we've been running all day. Matthew's been falling on his face. Oh yeah. Coming in pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Nice you got to look at that. It just chowed that Cisco. Yeah. All right. That's a nice surprise. Cool. It's a surprise. I was yeah. not expecting that. No. Okay, I'm gonna go jig your rod and catch one with the underwater camera. You kind of go, you don't have to. Oh, here we go. What is it gonna be? Oh, it's a walleye. He's staring at it. Pound in the mud. Ooh, that's a nice walleye. 
He ate half of it. Did he get all the minnow? Oh, that was cool. Oh, decent. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Oh, this has been a fun day.